Hey, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen. Today we're going to look at 4.1, and this is the second CED question of attribution theory and person perception. So just always want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel and hit that like button and all the comments that are great. Also, thank you so much for doing that. If you haven't done it already, please hit that subscribe button and help me out. Thank you. Now let's get started. So here's a list of all the key terms that you're going to need to know for 4.1, attribution theory and person perception. And I'm going to do a separate video like I always do where I put in the definition and real life examples so that you can get your flashcards ready and so that you can understand how to apply them on test day. So as I was saying earlier, there's three CD questions for 4.1. So I've broken them into three different videos just to make it easier and more manageable for you to be able to learn the content for each of those questions and the essential knowledge that goes with them. So the second question we're going to look at is explain how lotus of control, internal and external, applies to behavior and mental processes. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about the lotus of control. It's a concept in psychology that helps explain how people perceive control over the events in their lives. So this concept is important because it influences how we think, how we feel, and act in different situations. So let's start by looking at the definition. The locus of control refers to the degree to which you believe you have control over the outcomes in your life. So the key question is this. Who or what do you believe is responsible for your successes and failures? So there are two types of lotus of control. So they're internal, internal and external. So let's break them down. So let's start with internal locus of control. So people with an internal locus of control believe that outcomes are influenced by their own actions and decisions. They think I'm in charge of my own destiny. So for example, I did well on the test because I studied hard. Or if I fail, it's because I didn't put enough effort into it. How does this affect behavior and mental processes? Well, people with internal locus of control are more likely to take responsibility for their actions. They tend to have greater motivation and persistence because they believe they can influence their outcomes. This mindset often correlates with higher self-esteem and better coping strategies, making them more resilient in the faces of challenge. Now let's look at external locus of control. People with an external locus of control believe that outcomes are determined by external factors like luck, fate, or other people. They think my life is controlled by the forces outside of me. So for example, I did well on the test because the teacher made it easy. If I fail, it's because the test was unfair. How does this affect behavior and mental processes? People with an external locus of control are more likely to attribute outcomes to luck or other people. So this mindset can lead to feelings of helplessness or lack of control, especially in a difficult situation. It may result in lower motivation and less persistence when facing challenges. So why does this all matter? Understanding your locus of control can help you reflect on your reactions to successes and failures. An internal locus of control can encourage you to take responsibility, stay motivated, and work harder towards your goals. But an external locus of control might sometimes make you feel stuck or powerless, but recognizing this mindset can help you help shift your perspectives and take more ownership over your life. So here's a little chart, just a comparison of the internal and external locus of control. So we have internal, takes responsibility for outcomes. External, attributes outcomes to external factors. Internal, higher motivation and persistence. External, lower motivation and effort. Internal, better mental health and resilience. External, more prone to anxiety and passivity. How does the locus of control affect behavior and mental processes? Here's just a little summary. So internal locus of control promotes proactive behavior, problem solving, and a sense of empowerment. It's associated with higher academic and professional achievement, but it can sometimes lead to overconfidence and self-blame. External locus of control may lead to passivity, avoidance, and reliance on others. It's associated with feelings of helplessness and stress in uncontrollable situations. It can be helpful in accepting uncontrollable outcomes, though. Okay, so here's a little summary of what we've learned so far. The lotus of control is a spectrum between internal and external perspectives. It significantly influences behavior, motivation, and mental health. And developing an awareness of lotus control can help individuals adopt healthier perspectives and coping strategies. Okay, so that's all the essential knowledge for CD question number two. Explain how lotus of control, internal and external, applies to behavior and mental processes. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, hit that subscribe button for me or the like button. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I do answer everyone. I really like to see what kind of things that you like about the videos or what you would like to see on the videos. It really does help me to make better content. I sort of increase the amount of information I'm putting on the slides from feedback from my students. So thank you so much and hope you found it helpful. Thank you. Have a great day. See you next time.